Let's spend about 10 minutes talking Kansas State football, basketball, and recruiting on KSO Today, a free daily podcast brought to you by K-State Online. Well, Friday and another episode of KSO Today has arrived. People State Bank and Legacy Insurance sponsor this January 31st, 2020 installment, and it's February tomorrow, of KSO Today. And let's just jump right into things. Um, something I wanted to do on this daily podcast, and I just flat have forgot or been too lazy to, is once in a while just reference a board post that I thought was interesting or created a good discussion, um, share a couple of thoughts on that, and something that jumped out to me Maybe he posted it yesterday or two days ago, but I've read all the posts on it. Was of course Mobcat. Um, I think you know, we have a lot of great posters, so if I just praise one, it seems like I'm singling them out. But I think he's very intelligent. Um, has a lot of different perspectives. Sometimes I agree, sometimes I don't. But I really like like his, you know, just the way he posts and his intelligence and all the things he covers. Asked a good question about the CBI. You know, the not the NIT, not the NCAA tournament, but it was the question was if K State has a year that goes probably like people are expecting, you know, the rest of the way. Now, K-State's played better the last four games, as I really have talked about on here yesterday. But in general, let's say it's a type of season that includes four or five wins in the Big 12, something like that. A year similar to, you know, what West Virginia had last season was what Mobcat kind of referenced. Um, West Virginia, of course, a terrible year last year. Now they're one of the better teams in college basketball. They did choose to play in the CBI last year with a young team just to get more experience. Whether or not it helped them, I don't, you know, I don't know. You can look at their their journey through, which wasn't very long and talk about it, but they did it. And now they're having a fantastic year. Uh, I was somewhat surprised that I would say the overwhelming majority, there wasn't a poll posted. I don't think it was just questions, but I would guess 80 to 85% of the respondents were pretty strong in their response of yes, that K-State should play in the CBI if that's offered to them. Um, when I say I was surprised, it's just, you know, I think it's sometimes people have a lot of pride and say, well, my team should never play in that, or this team should never play in that. Um, which I, a stance that I don't agree with. I think people far too often get just, you know, embarrassed or, or act like they're hurt by what their sports team does on social media or on message boards, um, which I, you know, I get, but I think that's sometimes taking it too far. So I was surprised and happy to see that's n- that was virtually none of the talk. And it was just, hey, whatever's best for the program, I'm for. And I think, I think personally, it'd be good for the program to go do it if they have the opportunity. It would perhaps most likely cost them some money, as, as referenced in that post, too. I don't want to give away everything in there because it's on a premium message board. You know, it, it did cost West Virginia some money to do it, uh, to play in that tournament. So there are questions for sure, but I think it's something we may well uh, have to answer at the end of the season, not us. I don't think they're going to ask me or any of the subscribers if K-State should go, but K-State may have to make that decision. I'll be fascinated to see what it is. If it happens, um, I would guess they would do it. Um, I think with the team, you know, some young pieces that they really wanted to work with, they would want every opportunity to keep playing, but, but we'll see the, the point is, I just want to talk about those things once in a while to give you an example of what's on the message board. If you're not a member, I appreciate Mobcat, pardon me, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, starting that thread and his thoughts throughout there. And even this dissenting thoughts, because it's not a slam dunk. I mean, there's reasons not to do it too. So if you haven't read it, if you haven't contributed to that thread and you can, um, I think it's cool because I appreciate the question and enjoyed it. Uh, K-State of course does play at West Virginia tomorrow. We'll have a preview coming from myself and KSU underscore fan in the morning. If K-State was to pull off what I would consider to be a shocker, you know, and sweep the series with a really good West Virginia team and, and get a great road, road win at West Virginia, maybe we start discussing the NIT some instead of the CBI. But until that happens or until things change, I think that's the that's the point and a great question to look at. You know, I want Fridays to be fun here on the, uh, what am I saying, KSO today. I'm frazzled this morning because I was thinking about Flanders. Typically, I want to have Flando Fridays. This was not a good week to start it for him. Uh, we didn't have the KSO show last night, which we played on Thursdays. Without getting too into it, Flanders is fine. He's doing great. But you know, had a little family issue last night. Uh, if you hear this, you know, just think about Flanders, that kind of stuff. His family, they'll be doing fine. Um, but yeah, keep them in your thoughts. Uh, but since we can't do Flando Fridays, and I have an intense love for alliteration, and all I can come up with are names that use the same Letter, how about five for Friday uh, starting this week? I want to talk some some K-State football. I love K-State basketball. I'll talk about it every single day, but I know people love to hear football, and I like to talk about it too, and I haven't got to for a while. So for my first five for Friday, which I'll sneak in every so often, sometimes I'll do Flando Friday, sometimes five for Friday, sometimes Friday's five, which are five questions from the members. Any other FF name I could possibly think of, I'll do. But today's five for Friday are five redshirt freshmen Redshirt freshman, I expect to play significant roles for K-State 
in the 2020 football season. Uh, you can disagree with this in the comments, on the board. You can tell me why it's out of order. You can tell me who I forgot. Tell me how you change it because I think this will be up for debate. And the five I have, or at least the order I have them for sure, could easily be switched around. Number five, I have Tyrone Lewis. Um, he was used in a pair of November games against Texas and Iowa State. And Lewis's name was one that defensive coaches really used more and more as the season wore on. If you were watching those weekly pressers that we would have, you know, fortunately with, say, Scotty Hazleton or other defensive assistants, you would start to hear Tyrone Lewis's name mentioned more and more. I think Wayne Jones and Jonathan Alexander will probably be the two starters at safety, but that's not set in stone, and Lewis will push those two. And I think at worst, you know, Tyrone Lewis is probably earning that significant number of snaps that Alexander was playing as the third safety, you know, last season in 2019. Number four, I think it's going to surprise some people. Not the name, but I have him this low. I have Jacardier Wright at number four. You know, really a more physical, one-cut one style of back. You know, Wright was used really most heavily this past year in one-back sets to run inside a lot of A-gap power with him. Um, not a super diverse skill set early in his career, but he really burst onto the scene you know, with a six carry, 60 yard performance and a score in that regular season finale over Iowa State. He looked really good in that game, looked really, really fresh, very powerful. You could tell he'd gotten better. He also earned a pair of carries in the Navy game uh, in the Liberty Bowl. He kind of battled some injuries throughout the year, too, that weren't talked about a ton, or perhaps he would have played even more than he did. And I might have him higher on this list because perhaps it would have given me a perception that he was higher up the pecking order. Because number three, I have another running back, and it's Joe Irvin. Um, I think a lot of people would put Wright over Irvin, particularly based off kind of where the two finished the season, where Jacardier Wright was, like I said, getting significant carries against Iowa State while Joe Irvin was maintaining his red shirt. Um, Irvin's probably highlight was getting 10 carries for 46 yards in that midseason win at KU. And then he was essentially shut down after that to maintain his red shirt. I think smart people could absolutely make the case that Wright has a better future or could be ahead of Irvin currently. I just think Irvin is the more complete back. And I got the sense that when both were healthy and we weren't talking about saving red shirts or the concern wasn't how many games do they have left, I got the sense that Irvin was ahead of Wright or being used more than Wright. Um, I like his speed. I think he'll be a good pass catcher out of the backfield. Uh, I, I, I like him probably the most. I have a big Thomas Grayson guy too. I still am waiting to see what he'll do. He'll be a, you know, a redshirt freshman next year as well. He just didn't get on the field this past year. He's not on my list. And I'm not leaving off Clyde Price. I just don't know if he's going to have a running back, linebacker, what it is. Um, but I have Joe Irvin number three. He is my favorite of those freshman backs, but it's splitting hairs. We'll see what happens. And I could easily see a scenario where I feel really dumb for having Jacardia right number four on this list. Number two, Will Jones, another defensive back. Tyron Lewis had at number five. Will Jones, you know, played in just four games to maintain his red shirt, but two of those games, you know, were at Texas Tech and in the Liberty Bowl, really showing his ascension. Similar to Jacardia Wright, you know, towards the end of the year. The coaches regularly just raved about Will Jones. Um, when we asked, you know, Scotty Hazleton, hey, if you're going to have a four by one relay or whatever, if you're going to no, if you're going to have a defensive player race, the opposite player, you know, to beat Josh Youngblood, who would you pick? And I think the first word he said was Will Jones. He said a few other names too, but that was his first one. They love Will Jones at the nickel. I think there's playing time available there. He came on strong late. Uh, he's got a very legitimate chance to be K-State starting nickels, a redshirt freshman next season. And I, you know, think, if all goes well, this guy probably should be a fixture in the secondary, either as a starter or a significant, you know, player for the next four seasons. Number one for me is Cooper Beebe, you know, who came to K-State, thought of as a defensive tackle, very quickly moved his way to the offensive line. You know, his most recent height and weight listed on, you know, the official roster is 6'3", 342, I believe is what I saw. Um, he doesn't weigh that anymore. I, I don't want to take a guess at it. If I were, I would say more in the 315, 320 range. Um, and he looks fantastic. I mean, he is so thick and built so well throughout his body. Um, he doesn't look kind of like a stereotypical 330-pound offensive lineman. You know, he's only 6'3", and something Derek's taught us, uh, DUI's taught a very good job of, of teaching us is that it's not about just the height. It's how long are their arms. You'll see K-State taking sick kids who are 6'5 and 6'6". Six, six, DUI will tell you, hey, they got to play inside. And those same kids are telling us the same thing. Um, it's not just how tall you are, it's how long you are. Cooper Beebe's only 6'3". Excuse me, Cooper Beebe is only 6'3", but he has long enough arms, quick enough feet that he has an excellent chance to start at left tackle, right tackle for K-State next year. I'd be surprised if he's not a starting tackle on one of those sides, wherever K-State thinks he fits the best next year. If he's not at tackle, which means they found options they thought could help there, whether it's, you know, Katori Leviston, um, perhaps Christian Duffy. 
then they would move BB inside perhaps. But he's he's their best young offensive lineman. He's one of their best linemen on the roster. He might be their best lineman next year, period. Um, I get a very strong, you know, Cody Whitehair, BJ Finney vibe coming off of Cooper BB. And I know it's putting a lot on him, but I think he'll have that type of career. You know, like Will Jones, I think he's going to be a four-year fixture, probably as a starter along the offensive line. And uh, I would be surprised if Cooper BB at minimum is not at some point an All-Big 12 player for K-State, maybe even relatively early in his career. Check back today for a release of Flanders' report card from over Oklahoma. He does have that finished up. I appreciate him working through that and getting it done. Um, I see Derek putting in some pretty significant work on a brand new football recruiting big board. That will be releasing soon, perhaps even as soon as today. Uh, plus, of course, we'll have a full preview of the West Virginia game from KSU underscore fan and myself tomorrow morning, plus coverage of the battle between the Wildcats and Mountaineers uh, on the site tomorrow at KS. So that does wrap up another day. Well, and shoot, I guess another week of KSO today. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a terrific weekend.